Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I'm so excited you're here tonight because tonight we are talking all about a fairy tale theme and fairy tale themed ideas and activities and centers and gross motor, all things fairy tale. So tonight what we are gonna do, just like we always do, I'm gonna flip the camera around and walk you guys around my classroom and show you all the things we're doing. And remember, I teach half day out of my house and I'm state licensed but we never get to all of this. So I'm gonna have to pick and choose the things that my kiddos need this year, the skills I need to work on, and then I'll do those. And then the other ones are just fun ones that um, I love and thought up for you guys. In the top of this post, there is a freebie. So make sure after we're live, you go grab that and um, use it in your classroom. So the first thing I wanna show you is my sensory table. And I'm super excited about this. My kids are loving this sensor table. So it's dried, what are these, dried peas. Um, and just so you know, these are not, you can't find these at Dollar General, you can't find them at Target. You have to go to Walmart to get dried peas or the grocery store, because I had to go all over. <laughs> um, they're not everywhere like, like beans are. But these are just dried peas, so it's kind of like a grass um, thing going. And then these little moth rocks I found at the Dollar Tree and then tweezers, and then these fabulous gems, and they're different shapes, and I got these at Michael's, and I got, it's the giant bag, and I have the bag to show you guys, um, but yeah, so I have a whole bunch of gems in here, and they're different shapes, so that's sneaking in some math, and then if you can see over here, one of my little friends today, looks like she collected all of the unicorn mini erasers. I found some unicorn mini erasers at Target last year, so I threw those in there. And then these fabulous, um, like metallic eggs, which opening and closing the eggs is great fine motor work. And then um, they're sorting them, so you can hear, like this one has beans in it. Um, that little lady got all the unicorns, so it's a great fine motor, and I mean, there's what, you can pretend these are like giant gems from like Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. You, oh look at this one's got all kinds of goodies in it. Um, you can pretend they are like golden eggs from Jack and the Beanstalk, all the things. So yeah, so that is what is in my sensory table. Um, let me keep walking and I'll show you the gems before I forget. So here are the gems I got from Michaels. I got these like last week, I think. So here's the bag. So they're that Createology um, gems and it's a big bag. So there's my hand if you wanna kinda see. So yeah, so it's a big one pound bag of gems and they were different colors and I used my 40% off coupon and I wanna say they were like, they weren't cheap but they weren't like super expensive either. So this is a fun manipulative for a fairy tale theme. And then the eggs and some other things you could do with these eggs are, and I got these at the dollar store um, cause it's Easter. Um, you could write numbers on them and they could put, count out that many gems and put them in the eggs. You could write numbers on them or letters, sorry, write letters on them and they could put the matching letter manipulatives inside. Um, so yeah, or you could stamp with them. So do an art project with them. So open them up and then stamp them. Um, so you could do all kinds of things with these metallic eggs for your fairy tale theme. Um, and here's the mini erasers I had from last year. I also found these little crowns at Michael's and you guys know I love these for like gross motor. So you can like put them on the ground and they can like hop over them. You can put numbers on them, make them into hopscotch, put letters on them. Um, these are great for gross motor. I found those again at Michael's. And then party hats, so they could be like the crown, or like the points on a castle, and you could hide letters under there, and they could, you could have to tell them, um, like this letter makes the buh sound, and it, the word bat starts with it. Um, so and, they, and then they could guess what letter and you could open it up and it could be the letter B, be under it. So you could use these party hats for all kinds of different like hide and seek um, games. And then some other things I thought of are these crowns. So these are like party crowns you get from like the party section. You can tell they're long and they're like, I guess you like put them on your kids' heads for birthday parties. But I thought they would be really fun to make patterns on with these jewels. Cause you know, if we buy manipulatives, we wanna use them and get our money's worth. So like they could make colored patterns. So this one's just an AB pattern on it. Um, and again, these I just got at Target. 
um, like three days ago. So they are still at Target. And I want to say it came in like a pack of 12. And I also use these in the block center, which I'll show you um, in a little bit. And then you could also use these gold plates. So you could put a number on them and they could just put the number of um, gems on the golden egg. So that's another fun activity for you too. So again, all these fun manipulatives because we want to keep our kiddos moving and grooving. We want to have stuff in their hands so they're touching and feeling and moving around, um, acting all these things, acting out acting out um, we want to make sure they're actually doing the activities rather than just doing those worksheets because you know that's just how the brain works better and then here are some fun activities i have in my fairy tale math and literacy centers packs so again to keep going with the crown theme this is just a crown jewel shape cover up so they pick a card diamond or rhombus whatever you call it and they just cover it up and you could also cut these out if you wanted um, or you could use them as a worksheet and they could use bingo dabbers. But if you use um, bingo chips, when they clear their board, all the magnets stick to it. So it just makes it a little bit um, more fun to play the game and end it. So yeah, so this is a crown jewel shape game. Here is a little red hen game. So I put two levels in because I know some preschool classrooms use this and then some kinders use this too. So there's two levels. So there's a count, actually there's three levels, sorry. So there's a count board. So they basically just pick the card and then they would count out that many beans. One, two, three, four, and place it on the 10 frame. And these are just those like lima beans. And then you could also do, if you guys are working on subtraction, there's a five frame and a 10 frame board in here. Um, so you would pick a card. So five minus one. So what they do is they put five seeds, which are Play-Doh, on their board, and then they would smash that many. So five minus one, they would smash it. And then they would count how many are left. One, two, three, four, and they can write it down. So they are adding, or adding, they're subtracting, but they're also smashing and they can kind of understand that, you know, they have five and they got rid of one and it's smashed so it's not there anymore and how many are left for. So it's just a really great visual and tactile way for them to explore informal subtraction. So here is a Rapunzel game. Okay, so if somebody's asking about all these fabulous trays, so the big ones are from the Target dollar spot during back to school. Lakeshore also has them. They're on Target's website in the Bullseye Playground. Um, these are from Amazon. They're smaller. You can tell like these don't fit a full page, but then these do. So I just, I have a lot of my activities prepped on trays and then I put them um, back there on my cabinets and then when I need one I just pull one off so it's ready to go. So it's kind of how I prep stuff. But this is a fabulous um, Rapunzel book. These, um, they are diverse and they're fabulous. They're board books. But you guys look at the beautiful illustrations. Um, there's a whole series. It's called Once Upon a World. If you go to the top of this post um, and click my Amazon storefront though all of those are there and it's really important for our kiddos to see the princesses look like them so these are a really great um find um i actually my friend jen jennifer from the multicultural classroom um, i found these on her her blog she uses them in her classroom so thanks miss jen for finding those for all of us um but what i did was i just made braids like okay i don't have a girl so my braids aren't that that fabulous and I don't braid my hair, so they're not the best. But you know what? They work, right? Um, and I just did different colors. Um, I want to go out and get like a light brown um, yarn too, but this is just what I had in my classroom. But again, make sure you have all your colors um, represented. And then I just braided them different lengths. So I have some short ones and I have some long ones. And then what they do is they're going to measure with counting cubes or chains, whatever you want to use, and they're going to count how big Rapunzel's braid is, and they could even put them in order from shortest to longest, um, things like that. So again, these are just braids of yarn, super simple. So you don't need any anything but yarn for this. Um, yeah, the girls will love this, I saw somebody say. 
So to keep going with the Rapunzel theme, this is in, again, my um, Fairy Tales Math and Literacy Center's pack. It's a roll, build, write. So they roll a dice. This one, we're just gonna pretend it rolled on five. They build Rapunzel's tower, and you could use counting blocks, you could use Legos, whatever you want, and then they have to write it. Right here. So yeah, so another fun way, and you can have them use two dice, so they could roll, add, so they would roll two dice, add it together to get the total, and then build the total and write the total too. If you are working on addition, and if you're doing three bears, I mean, you have to sort by size, right? So you can sort by large, medium, and small. And again, this is in my Math and Literacy Center's pack, but if you don't have my pack, just put out large, medium, and small plates. And then if you have these bear counters, you can sort the bears on them. You can just walk around the classroom and find large, medium, and small objects. Um, yeah, so they can just sort by large, medium, and small because that medium is really tricky for um, four-year-olds and five-year-olds. So they'll usually get large and small, but that medium always comes last developmentally. So that one is tricky, the medium size. And if you love Princess and the Pea, why not make Princess and the Pea patterns? So I just cut up some pipe cleaners, and these are the pattern cards. And what they do is they're going to copy the pattern if they're three or if they're ready they can extend the pattern with these fabulous little pipe cleaner mattresses. So they can extend it, and then if they want to, if your kiddos are ready, they can make their own pattern. So it's totally up to you. But again, just grab some pipe cleaners, and now you have mattresses. So again, another fun, hands-on way to get them exploring patterns. Okay, so I don't know about you, but you guys, my kiddos always are obsessed with Jack and the Beanstalk. We did this game today and they went bananas. So this is one of those egg cartons from Sam's, um, or probably Costco has them too. So I took a whole bunch from like the bo extra boxes and then I just put stickers in the bottom and there are letters, I just wrote letters on them. And then I made these golden egg um, beans. So these are just lima beans. And okay, so they didn't turn out the best, but they work. So I just took some gold acrylic paint, put it in a baggie, and shook, 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 sh or shake, 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 and then they turned out like this. So again, they're not like super fabulous. Like some, some people dye beans and they turn out amazing. Um, mine are okay, <laughs> but you know what? The kids don't care. And then I just took a vine from the dollar store and wrapped it around, and then these are just like paper clouds I made. So now we have a castle floating in the sky, and they have to match the letter, and I put uppercase on one side, and lower, oh, this was an M, so uppercase on one side, and lowercase on the other, and they just have to match them. And I put little yellow dots here, so that way they kind of know where the beans go when they're done. You could also do this with numbers, so you could put a number on the dot, and they could just count out that many golden or magic beans. So they could do with numbers, you could do with letters. Um, you could also make different colored metallic beans, so you could have like like a pink metallic, a gold metallic, um, and they can make patterns across too. So you could do this with letters, numbers, or patterns. And then I also, in my center's pack, I have these Jack and the Beanstalk um, printable numbers. So they have to match the 10 frame, the number, and um, the fingers. And then I also have the magic beans. They can pretend they planted. So again, so they're counting and they're looking at numbers that are represented different ways. So there's the, um, the, the numeral, again, the fingers, and the 10 frame, and then they have to count out the number of objects. So yeah, and it goes up to um, 20. You could also use these glass gems from the dollar store if you don't wanna make, make beans. And somebody's asking about these lima beans. These are just those big ones, like the big beans. They're not the itty bitty tiny ones, if that makes sense. So yeah, again, some of them mind, <laughs> some of them didn't turn out the best, but just pick out the good ones, right? They won't know, the kids won't know. And then you can also build, so we have three little pigs, right? And three little pig, pigs are great builders. So why not build letters with straw, which is yellow pipe cleaners. I really need to get like stock in pipe cleaners. Um, sticks, and these are those smaller 
um, popsicle sticks and you can find them at Michael's. You can tell we painted them. So I use them for many themes. And then bricks, I just use these red glass gems because I found them at the Dollar Tree. So they can build all the letters with the straw, the sticks, or the bricks, just like the three little pigs. And if you want, they can write them as well with an Expo marker. So yeah. So who knew handwriting could be so much fun, right? You don't have to always do those boring worksheets. Okay, keep going. So you, you guys are loving, and so are my kiddos, name crafts. So I added another name craft to this um, fairy tale pack. So this one's just a castle. So this is how I, um, if, like if I'm doing small group, because you guys are always curious how I set it up. So I would just have all the principles on a tray, and then I would actually have the word cards out too, or their name cards out. Little um, red Legos would be really fun. Um, little bricks for those. Those would, would be really fun, and they have red, like a whole bag of red at the Dollar Tree right now, so that would be really fun. So what they do is they just count out how many they need, how many letters are in their name, and then glue them down, or cut them out first, glue them down, and then I always have my kiddos write it in pencil and then I trace. That way if they mess up, they're not devastated. Because um, you have those kiddos that are a perfectionist and that are absolutely devastated if they write their letter wrong. So I always have them write it in pencil and then I trace it, so it's no big deal. And then if you're curious about how my three-year-olds do this, um, they use those bounce back scissors so they can do the activity too. And I'll show you those when I get to art. And then for Red Riding Hood, my, just so you know, my fairy tale math and literacy centers pack, you guys, it's huge. It's a lot bigger than normal. So if you get it, like there's a ton of stuff in it. So you can grab, and if you don't have it, my pack, just grab real, uh, or not real, grab food from the pretend center and they write numbers on a basket and they can like tomato, tomato, and they could put it in the three basket, lettuce, lettuce, and they put it in the two, pie, put it in the one. And these little baskets I got last year at um, Target, maybe, on clearance after Easter. So, yeah, so just look in the Easter section for some baskets. All right, so we're going to show you something. Oh, here, let me show you the freebie. So this is the freebie on the blog. So these, look at these, you guys. Oh, my gosh. So we made these um, Monday and Tuesday. So we started them on Monday, and they were like, we need more time. But it was like time to go to recess. So we finished them this morning for table time, but look at these. Oh my gosh. And I took a class picture with them. Oh my gosh, cutest thing ever. So all it is, and it's super simple, it's just this page and I copied it on yellow paper. They cut it out and then you have to flip one side over so you can kind of see like this side has the black marks and then this one on the inside has the black marks. So it matches up. That way you have points all the way around. And then, so they cut it out and I just taped it together so it was long and flat. And then I got some, I just cut up some shapes and I got these sticker rhinestones I had in my closet. These are from Walmart and I just cut, the, they were in like those 12 by 12 like page, they were giant. So I just cut them up into smaller sections. That way they could put them on you guys. Look at this one, this is like a very, very fancy crown. <laughs> Look at all the rhinestones. So fun. But it was great to find motor because they had to cut. They had to do these stickers. And these are a little bit trickier than you would think. And they were working with shapes. So I was talking to them about what shape is that? How many sides does it have? Is it round? Is it curvy? All of those things about shapes. Um, this tray is one of those from Amazon. So here, I'll show you my trays. You guys, we love trays in preschool, don't we? And kinder. So these are the Target ones, and these are just in my art center. So they're always here. I have a ton of them. Um, those are the Target or the Lakeshore, and then those are the ones off Amazon. All right, here is my Play-Doh tray. So again, the shape jewels, Play-Doh, and you guys, I cheat this year. <laughs> totally am cheating on Play-Doh. I'm totally using store-bought this year. Um, I put in some dragons, and these are ponies I found from the dollar store. These are those... Tob or Tob dragons. I bought two containers of them from Michael's. Um, stones from the dollar store, gems from the dollar store. And then I wanted some kind of like gold. So this is like a Mardi Gras necklace I cut up. So yeah, and they like to put it in the dough and it makes patterns. And then this is like a fairy tale cookie cutter set I got from Michael's. So it has like a 
a fairy, a dragon, and then a castle. So, so much fun. My kids are really loving this fairy tale theme. And I, I've never done a fairy tale theme before. This is my first time, so I'm super excited. Um, here is our painting activity. I will say nobody's done this yet, except for one friend, um, <laughs> because all the other stuff is so much fun. But it's a um, just kind of like a painting collage. So they're painting with straw, which is just, what is this? Like twine, and then sticks, which is popsicle sticks, and then a brick, which is a red block and they're just painting with it. And here's my trick to not having to remake this every day. Um, but I just take saran wrap and I cover it at night. I'll, I would do a lot better job than I am right now. Oh, this tray, if you're wondering, this tray is from the dollar store. Um, but I just cover it and then it'll. I'll, I'll usually get like four, sometimes five days out of it. Um, but yeah, but that way I don't have to remake all the art stuff every week or every morning when I get to school. So yeah, so three little pigs painting. But like I said, the other stuff is a lot more fun, so nobody's picked that this week, being totally honest. Okay, so if you watched my weather Facebook Live, we had a giant, this is usually on a table, but you can also do it on a floor. Um, we did a, a cloud count. So this is the three billy goats. So I made a bridge, um, and I use that, those Indi, it's India ink and a bingo dauber. And then I just drew some grass and um, river with those paint sticks. And then what we're gonna do is, we were gonna do it today and we just, um, we didn't, we didn't. <laughs> it happened. So they're gonna count out that many rocks. I'm gonna do a low number so I don't have to count out that many. Two, three. And then they can, we're also, I'm gonna make it tricky. And they're gonna have to match the dominoes too. So that way for my bigger, the bigger numbers. So that way they're doing kind of, it's kind of like doing a giant number board. And, it, and sometimes you guys, you just gotta like do something different. So make it bigger, make it smaller. That way it's not, you're not doing the same thing all the time. So if you did these all year, they'd probably get bored with it. But if you do them randomly, then they'll love it. And then I have a smaller version in my math and literacy science, or math and literacy fairy tale pack. So basically they just take, they roll a dice and they count out that many and they build their bridge. And they can either use one dice and count or they can use two dice and do that informal addition and they would have to roll, add, and put, count out the total. So again, really easy way to differentiate if you're doing small groups. And if I would be doing this activity with my kiddos, I would have my little guy, so I have three, four, and five-year-olds together. Um, so I would have my little, my friends who are working on the lower numbers do that side of the bridge, and then I would have my kids who are ready for the bigger numbers work on the bigger side of the bridge. So yeah, so really, really fun. Let me keep going. Okay, so do you guys see this? So this is my kiddos. Last week we did a, we did a puddle jump um, letter hop, and they loved it. So I thought, why not do Red Riding Hood? And these are all those like picnic plates, um, but I have them carry a little basket and they hopped over the number. I'm not gonna hop because I'll shake you guys. But they hop over the letter, or you could do numbers, and they have to say the letter. So they'd be like A, B, C, D, oh geez. And they would go all the way around. And it would be a really fun, um, I do it as a transition activity, so after music, they I put the plates out and they I put them out like this. I'll show you with my finger, and they do it all the way to to wash their hands for snack. Um, so yeah, so fun way to sneak in some gross motor and literacy at the same time. So this is a Cinderella letter match. It looks kind of a mess, doesn't it? <laughs> so what they do is they pick one of Cinder oh, one of Cinderella's shoes. And this one just came off. This is gonna be hard to put back together. And then they have to match it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this with two hands. Okay, one hand, guys. All right, let me try. Let me see. Oh, yep, not gonna happen. Okay, so we're just gonna put, oh, look, here's T. So they would put the chain on. You can see I hole punched it. So they would put it through and then Cinderella would have her matching slippers. So all the uppercase have chains on them and the lowercase are ready to find the matches to. And what I would do is if 
Like if I, I had just had this out as a um, center activity this week, but if I was differentiating, I would have my, I also have uppercase, so they can match uppercase with uppercase or uppercase with lowercase like it is out, or I have sound cards so they can match uppercase letter or lowercase letter with the beginning sound. Oh, Jennifer, you are just so sweet. Um, yeah, but um, this one the girls and the boys will love because anybody who loves shoes, like me, <laughs> loves this game. All right, so you guys know I love my writing trays, and you got to have a princess writing tray, right? I mean, I'm a princess at heart. I am a Disney girl. So this is just colored sand. I think this one is colored salt. So if you want to color salt, take salt, put it in a baggie, drop a few drops of either liquid watercolor or food coloring, and shake, 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 and let it dry. Super simple. So they pick a jewel, and then they take a fairy wand. These fairy wands are from Party City. They were silver, and I spray painted them yellow because I didn't want them silver. I don't know why. But what they do is they make the letter in the sand, and this is so much more fun than, but I say that, and then my center packs have worksheets in them because I know some of, you, some of you guys have to do worksheets in your classroom, so that's why they're in there. They're in there if you want them. Um, yeah, so they get to make their letter, and then they shake, 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 and then they pick another one. And these are just little jeweled letters. And if you don't have my center pack, just put some flashcards there and shake, shake, shake. And these writing trays, these are actually Melissa and Doug. They um, lacing sets come in them. You could also use a, um, a plate with, like, a, a lip on it just to make sure the sand doesn't fly out. And these are those jewels again. I'm telling you, those jewels, I'm loving them. And then if you want to, you can also do either – names so it comes with blank cards so you can write names on them or if your, your kiddos are ready you can do sight words so they would take the jewels and make the sight word so they would make a bedazzled sight word super super fun okay and then because fairy tales are great for retelling i have some retelling packs if you don't have my retelling back i'll tell you my secret Take a book and copy it on your copier and copy the characters and just cut them out and laminate them. And then you have character cards to match your story. And then I have, um, we're retelling, you can tell they did three bears, three billy goats, and there's also three pigs in there. And then I just have the little, little baggies with um, the book on the front. So yeah. So in, in reading and retelling stories, you can really never re read a book enough time home. So I know we always like get sick of reading the same books over and over and over and you're like oh three bears I'm sure they've read that. Will you be surprised some of my kids are like I've never read three bears before and I'm like really you've never read three bears. So don't always assume that your kiddos have read some of the classics because you might be the one introducing them to the classics. So read it and read it over and over and over again because the more times you read it the more details they're going to pick up in the words the more details they're going to pick up in the illustrations, the more they're, they're going to build fluency, they're going to build reading comprehension, they're going to build a sense of story, they're going to pick up on all those story elements like the setting and the characters and the events and the place, or which is setting, sorry. Um, but they're going to pick up on all of those things. So never ever think you're reading a book too many times. You can literally never read a book enough times, ever, ever, ever. So here is my writing center this week. So I have all the fairy tale word cards, and the fairy tale paper. And again, I have uppercase and lowercase to differentiate. And these, you guys, oh my gosh. So I don't know how I thought of this, but I made these like magic wands. And these are one, I guess one of mine got smashed by a little guy. These are, again, I really need to buy stock and pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaners from the dollar store. And I just folded the end into a star. And I have these letter beads. And these are just from Amazon. I, I think you can buy them at. Michael's too, but they're cheaper on Amazon. And I have uppercase out. I do have a lowercase set as well. But they take the word card and then they can make the word on their magic wand. How fun is that? Oh my gosh, you guys. My We did this for table time on Monday and they loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So it was really fun. I just have one kind of in there as an example. So yeah, and these are these sparkly ones I found at the dollar store for Easter. So yeah. And Elizabeth said pipe cleaners go on sale a lot at Hobby Lobby. I also added these chalkboards. Um, so these are just 
trays from the dollar store. And you guys, I'm not crafty. I, I'm like cutesy, but I'm, I'm not really good at like craft things. Um, so all I did was, these are like those trays from the dollar store and I sanded them and then I painted them with chalkboard paint. And I put ribbons in the corner, mostly so it would kind of like not scratch when they're stacked. And what they can do then is they can write their words or their name, whatever it is, on a chalkboard since a lot of classrooms don't, oh gosh, have chalkboards anymore. So yeah, so just dollar store tray. These are in like the fancy party section at the dollar store or dollar tree. And then so I sanded them, I painted it with chalkboard paint so it would stick. And that's it, super simple. But yeah, I just put them out and I, I just have them in this little like book box thing. And I just have a little cup of chalk. And just so it's something different at the writing center, so it's not the same thing all the time. All right, books. Oh my gosh, you guys. So one thing with this theme is uh, there's seriously not enough time to read all of these amazing, amazing books. At the top, these are those that I was showing you, the Rapunzel one. Um, and this is just the top of my bookshelf. And it works great for board books. Um, but this is those Once Upon a World. So there's the Princess and the Pea, the Snow White, and look at them. Oh, so beautiful. All the different princesses. And then there's Princess and the Pea, the 12 Dancing Princesses, um, Little Red Gliding Hood. This one is super cute. Um, the ones in the middle are just your classic, traditional ones. Those I found, um, Scholastic has those. Um, this is a new one I found this year. It's Little Red little the little red fort so instead of building a or it's a, it's a little it's based off the little red hen but instead of building a bread she built a fort so it's super cute oh my gosh little red hen or the little red i can't read today the little red fort there you go <laughs> and then little red and the very hungry lion is also another fun one um, I love this Rapunzel one as well. And if you want super simple um, fairy tales, um, this author has them that are, the text is very, very simple. These are a little bit longer. So if you want super simple ones, just grab his. All right. So again, so, so fun. Okay. So this is what some of my girls built today. Look at this. They built a fairy tale castle with cups and they have all kinds of detail around the edges. Oh my gosh, so exciting. So I got the gold cups. You could do gold or silver um, from Party City. That's two 50 packs, um, just if you're wondering. And then I also used, I just put them in this bucket. Um, yeah, super simple, just gold party cups. Um, so these are the crowns I made. So I took these crowns from Target, like from the party section, and I cut them in half. And then I cut off like the band. And then I just made little like castle points with them. So I only bought one pack and I got all those castle crowns and I got, and I, have, I still have like six extra. So I can use for math if we want to do patterns. So yeah. So that's how I made my little castle crowns. And you can see they use them on top of the castle. And then I, again, more beads. So <laughs> grab some Mardi Gras beads. I just cut these in half just so we have some jewels. And then these are those moss rocks from the dollar store. Um, those tob or tobe. I don't know how what they're called. Little, I bought dragons and I bought a thing of knights. Um, yeah, and I bought them from Michaels because I used my coupon on them. And then these are ponies I got from the dollar store. And then tree blocks, which I have in here all the time. And then felt, because sometimes they just like to put the felt out. And then I have, these are my new, this is my new that I put out like last week, maybe. Um, this is the fairy tale stem. I can build a challenge card. This is only some of them. Um, I have more, but you can tell I have like the like the princess fairy tale ones, and then I have like traditional fairy tale, like um, the beanstalk and 
Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but I do have like princess-ish princess one, and then I have like traditional fairy tales too. So yeah, and then I have ones, some fun ones like Build the Wolf's House or Build a Fairy House, Build Beauty's Library, and then I have more. So there's a lot more I didn't, couldn't even fit. So yeah. So that is, oh, and then leaves. I always have these out though. These are my like fake leaves from like fake flowers at the dollar store. These we almost have out all the time now because they love those. So that is my block center. And they um, they let they let me um, show you guys their castle. I was like, leave it up so I can show all my teacher friends. And they were like, oh, okay. They got very excited. Um, so for the science center, we did weather last week and they're loving weather. So I actually didn't change it. I was gonna change it to plants because of Jack and the Beanstalk, but they are loving weather. And I just kept um, the clouds out because, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk's castle is up in the clouds. So I kind of kept the weather theme going, but you could also do plants because there's a lot of plants with fairy tales, or you could do rocks um, in your science center because of all the stone castles. And then I have my fairy tale counting stew which if you guys don't know what stews are, it is a fun counting game that your kiddos will love. So they pick a card and they count out that many objects. So they would count out seven crowns, four frogs, and six wands, and then they mix it up in their bowl and then they sort it back. It sounds super simple, but you guys, they go bananas for these things. All right, so that is my fairy tale counting stew. This one is in the themed counting stews bundle or the giant fairy tale bundle pack. I also put out my dramatic play theater. So here's the theater. I'll kind of walk around and show you. So here are the chairs and they're numbered because what the kiddos do is they go to their ticket booth, which this is just thick, that thick paper. I have these on Velcro dots so they can pick which stories they're acting out. And then since everything is digital, I made like a digital ticket booth. So they get to pick, point, press what they're, um, what story they want to play, press how many tickets they need, and then they come back here and they turn in their money and they get their ticket. And their seat, so if they're seat two, they have to match it to seat two so they don't get to sit wherever they want. So they have to match and find seat two. So again, sneaking in some math there. Um, and then we got a clock. And then the now showing sign. So they, the actors or the cast puts up what story they're acting out and they have to sign their name. So another way to sneak in name writing. I do have the other books we're doing and then I have name cards in here as well in case they need that extra support. And then here are the books they're acting out right now. So they're doing Three Pigs, um, Jack and the Beanstalk, Three Bears, and Three Goats. We are not doing The Little Red Hen yet. Um, and all I have, like, for three pigs, they don't need a lot. They just, it comes with these little hats, so that way they know who they are. And they don't need all of them. Um, the narrator usually holds the book, and they read the story, and the, little, the other um, kiddos act it out. The, this, screenshot this. This ready-to-read book, these are my favorite books to, for them to retell because the text is so super simple. The pictures are so super simple. Um, I don't have the Jack and the Beanstalk one, but I have the other one. So like I have the Goldilocks and the Three Bears and I have the Billy Goat one, which is over there in the other place um, by my game. But um, yeah, these are so super simple. Here, I'll open it. Um, but yeah, so it's so super simple. And the narrator can read the book. And usually the narrator... Um, at the so the first couple days, the narrator was always me, and now the kiddos feel comfortable with the books after reading them and rereading them and watching the plays over and over and over. They feel comfortable to retell the book. And then the backdrop, so these are just curtains, um, but they're actually play a plastic tablecloth. So you, if you can look in the corner, and this would be, I'm actually gonna do this for the backdrop of my preschool graduation too. So I have a command hook in that corner. Try not to make guys dizzy. And a command hook in that corner. And I hung a ribbon and I just tied it to the hook. And I just folded this over the ribbon. It's, this is, these are not attached to my wall in any way. And I just love rainbow. Y'all know me, I love my rainbow. So I just put up rainbow. You could do all red, you could do all blue, whatever you guys wanted. I just wanted some kind of like pretty backdrop. 
and I'm actually going to save it and use it for the preschool graduation. But I use those, you can tell there's a couple up there. I use these command hooks all the time for um, dramatic play, for like hanging things, so that way I don't have to put holes in my wall. You can see the bunting banners on it too. Um, and then, so they can act out the story. I, I have these mats. And, okay, so these, you guys, these three pig mats, I, they, I, okay, I'm going to totally age myself until I hold am. I, these are like 10 years old. Like I made these around when I first started teaching. The red one isn't really even red anymore, but they love them. Um, and they're great. So like the straw house and the stick house. So the straw, it's literally straw. And I, they glued it on and then I covered it with tape. Like you can tell these guys, these are like loved. And then <laughs> look at this one. If you look close, it's like a hot mess. They glued toothpicks to it, and then I just taped it on. And then I, this one went through the laminator. Um, and then, so yeah, so we have our three pig's houses. So they're super simple to set up. And then look, they can just put them away. Oh. Just like that. And then if they're acting out the, the, what is this? This is the goats. So, sorry gonna yell at me about turning my camera. Facebook yells at me about that sometimes. Um, so this is just a piece of poster board I cut in half. And then here's my bridge. It's okay. You guys know I like keep all the things. If, I'm sure you guys do too. But it's, I just taped it. And so that way they can open it. And it's just a piece of cardboard. So now they can go trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap all the way across their little bridge when they're acting out um, the three billy goats. Like super simple guys. And then here's my beanstalk. Okay, I'm really proud of this. Some things you get really excited about when you're a teacher. This, my beanstalk, I'm very excited about. So this is a green pool noodle and green vines from the dollar store. Um, and then at the bottom, look, it's a construction cone. Ha <laughs> ha! So that way it doesn't fall down. So if they're doing the bean, um, Jack and the beanstalk, then they have a beanstalk. Then you can just hide it over there in the corner. And then we have our snack shop. And if you guys don't have a big classroom, just totally dial it down a notch. Like you don't have to have the crazy snack shop. And if you have a small classroom, just put all of your snack shop stuff in the front. Um, I just am lucky and I have a big classroom, so I just put it all on the back shelf. Um, so we have the concession stand. We have the order form. Apparently my receipt paper is missing. Real life, guys. I don't know where it is. This is my receipt paper. is just like a roll of like tape, like um, cashier tape or paper. Sorry. And then we have. So I try and sneak in as much math and fine motors I can into pretend. So this is a tray. I want to say car trucks and cars came in this from Melissa and Doug. So they have to sort. They have to tell the cashier or the worker what. Um, color candy they want and then they have to use the tweezer put it in the bag and then they can weigh it um, and you can also use glass gems for these if you don't have pom-poms pom-poms are just cheap and free not free but like you can get them at the dollar store so yeah so fine motor they're sorting my color they're counting and now they're weighing and then I'm trying to have healthy food options too so we got some fruit and some water and then if you want to drink, you can ask for large or small. Again, more math. They can put in the ice cubes. Look at that fine motor using those tweezers. And again, these are gator tweezers. Look at this. Oh, they're so cute. They're like little gators. Um, and then they can just shh, put it in. And they can fill up their drink. And they can pretend it's whatever they want. And then my popcorn machine, we use this for all the themes. Um, it's just a box that I put like a little piece up and then this is just crumpled up paper for popcorn and salt is a salt shaker from the dollar store that is glued the holes are glued on that way we don't have salt all over the and their eyes and you know because it would end up everywhere right <laughs> let's be honest it would end up all the places so yeah so that is the theater and again, if you have a small classroom, just make it smaller. Just act out one or two stories. You can always, um, you don't have to have chairs. Put the, put the um, seats on the ground. Just kind of tape them on the ground. So yeah. Ooh, somebody says the dollar store has plastic ice cubes. I didn't see who saw it because it already popped up. Uh, like, it went through the next comment. 
So yeah, so that is the theater. Again, this is in, if you own the Dramatic Play Bundle, it has been added. So go ahead and download that again if you own it. All right, so those are all of my ideas and themes for the fairy tale unit. So at the top of this post, there is a link to my TPT store. You can grab all the printables. The STEM I Can Build Fairy Tales is there. The Dramatic Play Theater is there. Um, so, oh, my receipt paper is on the floor. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> she found it. It is. It was on the floor. I see it now. <laughs> um, so the theater, Dramatic Play Theater is there, and the Fairy Tale Math and Literacy Centers are there. All right. Well, you guys have a great night. Make sure you grab that crown freebie and... After this, make sure you go over to the Pocket of the Preschool Facebook group and show us what you're doing in your classrooms. Um, I love it when you guys sh um, share and take photos and show us what you're doing. Show me all the things you're doing in your classroom in action. Show me the centers in action because sometimes I give you a shout out on my Facebook page, which is super fun too. All right. Well, you guys have a fabulous night and I will talk to you soon. Bye.